Welcome and hello. My name is Miss Wilkin and I will be teaching you about fractions today. We are going to be comparing unit fractions, but we're going to look at them in a different way today. We are going to use capacity and measure to help us. How did you challenge your family in Would You Rather, the game show that Mrs Kingham showed you yesterday? Mrs Kingham asked me a question as part of her game show too. Mrs Kingham asked me if I would rather have one third of a bag of Brussels sprouts or one quarter of a bag of Brussels sprouts. I chose to have one third of a bag of Brussels sprouts. Do you think I like Brussels sprouts? Refer back to the stem sentence that you learnt yesterday, which is, when you compare unit fractions, the greater the denominator, the smaller the fraction. You're right, I love Brussels sprouts. They are my favourite vegetable. Would you prefer to have one third or one quarter of a bag of Brussels sprouts? Today we are going to compare fractions by using measure. We are going to start by using capacity. Capacity is the total amount of liquid a container can hold. And I'm going to need you to help me. I want to fill my container so that it is about one third full. I need you to shout stop when it's about right. How will we know when I have filled the container one third full? If I pour the same amount of water three times into the container, then the container will be full to the top. You're going to need to imagine that the container is divided into three equal parts. Right, get ready to help me by shouting stop when I filled it about one third full. Oh, perfect, thanks. Let's see what one third looks like on my picture of my container. Point where you think the water will stop. Let's fill it. How accurate were you? This time I would like you to shout stop when the container is one quarter full. Do you think there will be more or less water than last time? How would you explain this to somebody? If I am filling the container up so that it is one quarter full, how many equal parts do you need to imagine the container is broken down into? You're right. We need to imagine the container is divided into four equal parts, which is more than last time. If we have more equal parts, then each part must be smaller. Right, get ready to tell me when to stop. Tell me when you think I have filled the container one quarter full. Brilliant, thank you. Let's see what one quarter looks like on a picture of my container. Place your finger on the container where the capacity of the container is one quarter. Right, let's fill it. How accurate were you? What have we proved by filling our container up by one third and one quarter? We have proved that one third is larger than one quarter, as the whole has been split into three equal parts. Whereas when we measured out a quarter, we split our whole into four equal parts. Therefore, a quarter is smaller than a third. This links back to our stem sentence of the greater the denominator, the more equal parts there are, and therefore each part is smaller. What do you think is going to happen when we fill up our container to one tenth full? I have filled up this container one tenth full. Can you convince me? How would you explain it? You can use the starter, I know that. Let's do it together. I know that if I had the same amount of water ten times, it would fill my container to the top. 
You have imagined that the container has been divided into 10 equal parts and I have filled it up so, to, so that it is one tenth full. Let's see what one tenth looks like on a picture of my container. Place your finger on the container where you think the capacity of the container will be filled to one tenth. Let's fill it. Oh, there we go, it's one tenth full. How accurate were you? I have put these unit fractions in order, true or false. Don't forget our stem sentence and what these fractions looked like when we poured them. In the right hand corner of the screen, I've put our stem sentence to help us, which is when you compare unit fractions, the greater the denominator, the smaller the fraction. So have I ordered these fractions correctly? You're right. I've made a mistake. The answer is false. I ordered the fractions thinking that the smaller the denominator, the smaller the fraction. But we know that actually the smaller the denominator, the larger the fraction. So my largest fraction is one third. And my middle fraction is a quarter. And the smallest fraction is one tenth. What if I am filling up my container to one thousandth full? Will it be more or less water than last time when we filled the container one tenth full? Remember that the more equal parts a whole is divided into, the smaller each equal part is. You're right, it will be even less water than last time. It won't overflow as a thousandth is a tiny amount. Get ready to tell me when to stop. You are going to have to be super speedy. Let's see what one thousandth will look like on a picture of my container. Place your finger on the container where the capacity is one thousandth. Right, let's fill it up. Oh, how accurate were you? Here are our estimated unit fractions that we have poured. Here is one third, one quarter, one tenth and one thousandth. You can see that one third is a larger unit fraction than one thousandth, which proves our stem sentence, which is that when comparing unit fractions, the greater the denominator, the smaller the fraction. Let's look at comparing unit fractions using a different measure. This time we are going to use length and use a metre stick. Half a metre means the metre stick has been divided into two equal parts. So here you can see there's one equal part and here you can see the second half which is the second equal part. Let's use our metre stick to look at quarters. One quarter of a metre means the metre stick has been divided into four equal parts. So there's one quarter and one equal part. There's our second quarter and our second equal part. Here is our third quarter and our third equal part. And here is our fourth equal part and our fourth one quarter. Here we've got our metre stick again and we know that half a metre means our metre stick has been divided into two equal parts. We know that a quarter of a metre means our metre stick has been divided into four equal parts. How many equal parts would make one whole if my unit fraction is one tenth? You're right, there will be 10 equal parts. How many equal parts would make one whole if my unit fraction is 100? You're spot on, there will be 100 equal parts. Have I ordered these fractions in descending order correctly? 
Descending means fractions are ordered from largest to smallest. Stem sentences can be really helpful. So let's look at ours from today's lesson again. It's in the corner of your screen and it says, when you compare unit fractions, the greater the denominator, the smaller the fraction. So using my stem sentence, I know that one fifth is the largest unit fraction. 64 is the largest denominator, so I know that means it must be the smallest fraction. 10 is a smaller denominator than 24, so 1 tenth is bigger than 1 24th. So 1 tenth needs to go come after 1 fifth and 1 24th needs to go in between 1 tenth and 1 64. I'm going to explain today's task. I have two unit fractions, one half and one thousandth. Which unit fraction is the smallest? Which one is the greatest? You're right, one half is the largest unit fraction and one thousandth is the smallest unit fraction. Could now, could you write down five unit fractions that could be found in between these two fractions? Well done for working so hard today.